German attempts to capture Gellerfeld on the 29th of October 1914 were repelled by the more experienced British defenders. The nearby Zandvoorde Ridge was captured on the 30th and the next ridge to be attacked was the Gellerfeld Plateau. Would the Germans succeed in capturing this important high ground and press on towards Wipers, or would the British with their thin defensive line hold the Germans back? Here's the Battle of Gellerfeld with me, the Ace Destroyer. The British forces were dug in around the strategically important Menin Road. Gellerfeld was defended by the British 1st and 7th Division. The British defensive line was very thin and nearly all battalions had lost a lot of their men in the previous actions to stop the Germans from reaching wipers. The only b available reserve battalion in the Gellerveld sector was the 2nd Battalion Worcester Regiment. The town of Gellerveld itself was defended by the remaining men of from north to south, 1st Battalion Scots Guards, 1st Battalion South Wales Borderers, 2nd Battalion Welsh Regiment, 1st Battalion Queen's Regiment and the 2nd Battalion of the King's Royal Rifle Corps. The German attackers consisted of two corps, the 17th and the 15th Army Corps, which was a part of the Armee Gruppe Fabik. The attackers were with more than four times the number as the defenders and had a clear advantage. The German main attack on Gellerfeld and the entire British defensive line around Wipers was set for the 31st of October. The attack was preceded by an artillery barrage which decimated the 2nd Welsh. They had to retreat due to the casualties, but they left a rear guard to protect the South Wales border's right flank. The Germans were in an all-out attack, shouting, cheering into battle, trying to scare off the defenders. After the first attacks had failed, the Germans tried again, this time to their left of the men in road. The first queens who were defending were cut off, but kept fighting, literally till the last man. The 1st Battalion Queen's Regiment was nearly completely destroyed, with over 600 casualties. The Welsh were, as I told you earlier, on the retreat with a couple of rearguard men to secure the right flank of the South Wales borderers. The town of Gellerfeld got overwhelmed. All British defenders but the South Wales borderers retreated. The Germans had captured Gellerfeld at 11.30 in the morning. The, the South Wales borderers were now nearly completely surrounded. The Welshmen attacked the Germans in the town with the bayonet and regrouped at the Gellerfeld Chateau's eastern wall in a sunken lane. They still held their flank but desperately needed reinforcements. This was easier said than done, as everybody who wanted to reinforce the South Wales borders needed to cross an open field exposed to all sorts of fire. Brigadier General Fitzclarence, the commander of the First Guards, tried to send reinforcements, but the Germans repelled every oncoming British attack with the help of accurate artillery fire. Fitzclarence then went to the second Worcester's positions at Blackwatch Corner later that day, knowing that they were the only reserve forces in the area. This was around 1 pm. The commanding officer of the second Worcester Regiment, Major E.B. Hankey, prepared the battalion to attack under Fitzclarence who normally didn't have the command over the unit. Fitzclarence ordered the battalion to attack Gellerveld and restore the gap in the defence. Major Hankey ordered a recce party to cut wires and reconnoitre the area of attack. Hankey also ordered his A Company to occupy a trench northwest of the objective, probably to provide some suppressing fire. The rest of the battalion moved to the forest south of Polygon Wood, the jump-off point for their attack. They would be provided with extra clips of ammunition right before the charge, and when they charged forward they were met by a shocking view. Over a hundred British soldiers, most of them wounded, running, crawling back to safer lines. They were trying to escape from what the Worcesters were attacking. When they broke cover of the final set of trees to run across the open field leading to the village, German artillery came pounding on top of their formation. Around 100 men of the initial 370 were put out of action, most of them being wounded. They finally reached the gate of the chateau, 
where to the second worster's surprise, men of the South Wales Borders were still fighting on. The Worcesters were unaware of the fact that the South Wales Borders were still holding out. The time was now around 2.30pm. Major Hankey quickly visited the Borders commanding officer, Lieutenant Colonel H.E. Burley Leach, who was an old friend of Hankey. My God, fancy meeting you here, said Hankey, to which Leach replied as, Thank God you've come. The Worcesters now joined the remnants of the borderers in the sunken lane, east of the chateau walls. There was, however, a forest around 300 metres in front of them that was causing trouble. Accurate rifle fire made quick work of the Germans in the batch of trees. The only real threat for the Welshmen and the Worcesters were the Germans in Gellervelt itself. The British fixed bayonets and mopped up the town. The British ordered the retreat at dusk and the borderers and the Worcesters retreated under the cover of darkness to a new defensive line 600 metres westward of Gellervelt. The German chance of a breakthrough to Wipers was stopped by the actions of these two battalions, the 1st South Wales Borders and the 2nd Battalion Worcestershire Regiment. Gellervelt would remain in German hands for over four years, but the 31st of October 1914 was a disaster for the Germans, as the bulk of their assault on Wipers was stopped by the veteran and well-experienced British soldiers. The British held out long enough to build a new defensive line. The 2nd Battalion Worcestershire Regiment's casualties were 187 officers and men, of which 37 dead. Captain Gascoigne Williams and Lieutenants ECR Hudson and EA Haskett Smith were wounded. No other officers were hurt. The 1st Battalion South Wales Borders' casualty numbers are unknown to me. All I can say is that 80 of their men died on the 31st of October 1914 of which four officers. The German numbers are unknown, but they are high as well, as most of their forces had nearly to no battle experience. This was the Ace Destroyer, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe and leave a comment down below. Cheers!